Well, um, um, good day to you. Welcome to um, Daily Devotions with yours, Apostle Des, on this beautiful uh, Sunday, beautiful weather. Um, I pray that you be everyone who watches this will be greatly encouraged with the Word of God. And may you be empowered afresh with the Holy Spirit today to live for him. So, Father, we thank you for your word. And we pray that as we read your word and listen to your word, pray that you would highlight to us, Holy Spirit, that which you would want us to know today. And we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. So are we in Acts uh, chapter 18? We're going to have a quick look here. Uh, Acts chapter 18. After this, Paul left Athens and went to Corinth. There he met a Jew named Aquila, a native of Pontus who had recently come from Italy with his wife Priscilla, because Claudius had ordered all the Jews to leave Rome. Paul went to see them, and because he was a tent maker, as they were, so they were tent makers as well, in the same business, glory be to God. Um, he stayed and worked with them. So he worked with them for a while, making tents. Isn't that good? And that's what Paul used to do. Uh, I've said before, he used to do his business, tent making, to raise the funds for his ministry. And then he would go on to ministry and do that. He could have been paid from the church, but he felt led to let his God bless his business and use his business for the ministry. Um, and like I said, there's nothing wrong with both of them, whether you get your funding from the church or the funding from your business. I mean, you know, it's God who provides every penny from wherever it comes. Um, and he stayed and worked with them. Every Sabbath, he reasoned in the synagogue, trying to persuade the Jews and the Greeks. Every Sabbath, every Saturday, he would go to the synagogues and persuade them, try to persuade them through the word of God. When Silas and Timothy came from Macedonia, Paul devoted himself exclu exclusively to preaching, testifying to the Jews that Jesus was Christ. And when the Jews opposed Paul and became abusive, he shook out his clothes in protest and said to them, Your blood be on your own heads. I am, a clear, I am clear of my responsibility. From now on, I will go to the Gentiles. So Paul made it clear. The responsibility for him to share the gospel with them was off his shoulders. They didn't want to hear. And so he shook the dust off his feet and off his clothes. And you know what? We too do the same. I remember once I was in Hyde Park uh, at Preacher's Corner preaching the gospel to these Muslims. They didn't want to know whatsoever. So I, I shoot the dust of my feet and I went on to preach to those who wanted to hear. Hallelujah. And the Holy Spirit will lead us when to do that. Then Paul left the synagogue. And went next door to the house of Titus Justice, a worshipper of God. Crispus, the synagogue ruler, and his entire household believed in the Lord. Glory. So he was at some they didn't want to know. The next moment he went next door and they wanted to know. Hallelujah. And it says, and, and the whole household believed in the Lord. And many of the Corinthians who heard him believed and were baptized, hallelujah. So many of the Corinthians believed, and later on, Paul planted a church there because there was that many coming to faith, praise be to God. So isn't it wonderful that? And then one night, the Lord spoke to Paul in a vision. Do not be afraid, keep on speaking, do not be silent, for I am with you. And no one is going to attack and harm you because I have many people in this city. So Paul stayed for a year and a half teaching them the word of God. Isn't it wonderful when God speaks to you in visions and God told him, don't be afraid. Don't stop what you're doing. 
keep on preaching the gospel and um, and 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 that God was with him hallelujah and that's all we need isn't it beloved if we know that if if God is with us and the whole church is against us it doesn't matter if we've got God on our side that's all that matters hallelujah if God says I am with you guess what he is with us and that's all we need hallelujah and and I remember once uh, a few years ago we did a mission in London and we were giving tracts out near Buckingham Palace. And anyway, uh, two weeks later, this guy phoned me up from Nottingham and his first words to me says, I'm, I phoned you to encourage you. Do not stop what you're doing. Do not stop the ministry. Keep giving those tracts out. Even if you don't see anything happening, he said, keep giving them out. And I said, well, I didn't have any intentions of stopping anyway, but thank you for that encouragement. But what it was, he and his wife was in London that weekend when we were there and they were walking around on the tour sightseeing and they saw one of our red tracks that had been thrown away by someone on the floor. They picked it up and he said it led them to faith in Christ. They went home to Nottingham and... Um, they went to a local church, told the pastor what had happened. They got baptized very shortly after that. And now they're workers in that church. Isn't it wonderful? So uh, my prayer to you, if God has called you to a ministry, do not stop doing what you're doing. Keep on going. No matter who is against you, no matter who, who, who speaks against your ministry or tries to pull you down because they're jealous, um, just keep on going, keep on going, because God is with you. So we'll carry on with that tomorrow. So have a great day, yours, Apostle Des, and don't forget to subscribe. God bless you.